theyeshiva.net. Let us take a few questions. Beautiful stuff. Okay, question number one. The Rambam says, It's one of the fundamentals of our faith. Why? Why is it one of the fundamentals of our faith? In fact, the Rambam puts it into one of his 13 principles of faith in the introduction to his 11th cha- his commentary on Mishnah, the 11th chapter of Sanhedrin. It's one of the principles of faith, the concept of Nevu. But here the Rambam says clearly, I think following our conversations and discussions in the previous chapters, it becomes very clear why it's one of the fundamentals of Yiddishkeit. And it's one of the fundamentals of Allah. That Hashem communicates to people. In other words, there is no absolute gulf and dichotomy between a divine creator who lives in the heavens and then there is humanity down here on earth subjected to a life of frailty, mortality, vulnerability, decline, death, weakness, immorality, all types of inclinations that are sometimes counterproductive or destructive, addictions, uh, instincts, and... uh, (laughs) all types of behaviors that are less than perfect. What Judaism teaches us is that there is the unique ability for integration, for harmony, for synthesis, for oneness. And in fact, this is the essence of Allah. The essence of Allah is that the Rebbeinu Shalom gave us a blueprint through which we make ourselves and the entire world a place where the divine will is realized and manifested so that there is a complete harmony between our cosmos and its creator, that we become a mirror and a reflection of the true reality of Hashem in the world, that my outer eye and my inner eye become one. That ideal is essentially what all of halacha is. And if you remember in chapter one, especially in the questions and answers, we discussed the concept why the Rambam says, Vim Halacha always has a dual reality. One is it's trying to impress the divine will in every single situation, person, and circumstance. It's also trying to undo the status quo of a world that doesn't reflect its creator, a world that is egocentric, that is materialistic, that is vain. So that's why there's a mitzvah that I have to permeate my mind with awareness of the divine. But there's another mitzvah, that I have to remove the weeds from my mind I have to clear and extricate from my mind those perceptions that contradict my oneness with the true reality. And we explain there's the Matsui and there's the Einai Matsui as the two elements of Allah, Hashem as transcendent, Hashem as imminent. Matsui and Einai Matsui, you could go back to the segment of questions and answers of chapter one. We discussed this at length. So if you're looking at Hilchis Yisrael De Atari, you see here a clear pattern. And I want you to look at the pattern because this is so critical. The Rambam began with the awareness of Hashem the awareness of Hashem's unity, the mitzvah of love of Hashem, awe of Hashem, not to have any other gods in your mind, to appreciate the truth of Hashem's harmony and oneness. He discussed Maisim Rekava, Maisim Bereshis. Then he discussed the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem and Chilol Hashem. That's a continuum of that. In other words, our mitzvah and our ability to be able to become embodiments of Hashem's Kedusha in this world. Like he said at the end, when I live a good life, a normal life, a moral life, a balanced life, I create a Kiddush Hashem or God forbid the opposite. Chapter 6, he discussed the names of Hashem. How the Kedusha of Hashem is actually manifested in Hashem's name, and I'm not allowed to destroy it. It's almost like Hashem allowed His Kedusha to be manifested in the ink or the parchment in which His name is transcribed, and I'm not allowed to destroy it. In this Perik, the Raman goes to the next step. That there is that ability for the human being to become a keli, to become a vessel for Hashra Sashkina, for that the Shina, you are a conduit for the divine presence in this world, in all of the different uh, details of it that the Ramam addressed in this chapter. That is Miyisoide Hadas. It's one of the fundamentals of Yiddishkeit, that Hashem could communicate through people, and in fact, it's the ultimate ideal. What did Moshe Rabbeinu say in Parshas Baaloischa? Moshe Rabbeinu says in Parshas Baaloischa that what? Elder and Maid that are prophesizing. What does Moshe So Yeshua says, Oh, incarcerate. And what does Moshe say? Hamekanayatali. Umiyitain. Kolam Hashem Nevim. Kitid Hashem Esrochealeim. You're jealous for me that I'm afraid of competition. My yearning is that all of God's people should be prophets. Hashem should confer his spirit on them. Because as you could see from the Rambam, prophecy means removing the static. 
And each one of us, in our own way, must, must get closer to a place of Ruach HaKadosh. Then there is the special gift of Nevuah that depends, of course, on Hashem's will. After all my preparations, Hashem wants to wander. In, 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 in the prophecies of the future of Mashiach, it says, Esh-Bech Ruchi al kol basar v'nibu b'neichem u'b'neiseichem. The Rambam himself was fascinated with prophecy. The Rambam himself writes in his commentary on Mishnah, Mesech the Sanhedrin, that he wrote a whole sefer about prophecy. How to prepare for prophecy and what prophecy is. A whole sefer about this. We don't have it. We never found it. But the Rambam clearly testifies it. And it testifies this. The Rambam speaks about Navua in many places in his works, but he wrote a whole book about it, although we don't know about it. So this is why I think, I think, the Rambam is saying, because this is really the, 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 the link, the interlacing link between heaven and earth. Hashem's will, Hashem's reality could be realized in my life, in your life. That's, that's the concept. Next question. Excellent question. I was always told that prophecy can't exist nowadays. The Rambam does not here give this qualification. Gewaldic, excellent question. That is so true. The Rambam discusses all of the prerequisites for Navua. We expected one last thing. He should say, this is all in the good old days, you know? There was the Beis HaMikdash, first Beis HaMikdash, and it's based on a Gemara. The Gemara says in Saita, Mishem Mesu, Chagai, Scharia, O Malachi, Nestalka, Shechina, Mi Yisrael. Right? There's such a Gemara. A Gemara in Yumid, Avtes, Saita, Dav Memches, Toisefta, Saita, Sanhedrin, Yud Aleph, when the last prophets died, Chagai, Scharia, Malachi. These are the people who lived in the beginning of the second base of Mikdash, Nestalka, Ruach HaKadosh, Mi Yisrael. Ruach HaKadosh departed from the Jewish people. The Gemara says in Megillah, Esther, Soiv, Zman, Anavua. Esther is the end of the era of prophecy. The Rambam himself is going to say later, Malachi is the last prophet. What's going on here? The Rambam should have put this into the conditions. He says that sometimes the Shekhinah dwells, the Shekhinah doesn't dwell, right? It depends on a lot of things. But after he gave all of his characteristics, he says, Miyad Ruach HaKadosh Allah. He never writes once, as he usually does in all of the Alachas. This applies the time of the Beis HaMikters, this doesn't apply now. The Rambam does not say that. And therefore, it seems clear from the Rambam that the Rambam holds that Nevuah could be Bizman Hazah as well. The Beis HaMikdash and Eretz Yisrael and the time of Geula is not the prerequisite for Nevuah. And it's the only way you can answer the fact that despite the Gemara and Saita, you see that there are many, many sources in Chazal that Nevu and Ruach HaKodesh continued among the Jewish people after the end of the era of Chagas Chaya Malachi. And not only the time of Shas, even later. There's a Toisvis in Git and Daf Peches Amar Aleph, and Toisvis speaks about one of the Balei HaToisvis. You're talking about somebody who lived in the 13th century, the era of the Rambam, or after the Rambam, and his name is Reb Ezra Hanovi. Reb Ezra the prophet. Reb Reuven Margoli is the great gun in Talmud Chacham, edited the Sefer Shailas at Shuvis Min HaShamayim from Rabbeinu Yaakov Mabali HaToisvis, and he gives there a long introduction, quoting, if I'm not mistaken, I read it a long time ago, dozens if not hundreds of sources in Chazal and Rishonim where prophecy and Ruach HaKodesh continued. But the truth is, I don't have to go very far. The Rambam has a letter called Igeris Teimon. It's a fascinating letter, and in that letter the Rambam says, I heard from my father, Rabbeinu Maimon, who heard from his father, who heard from his father, an old ancient tradition that the Nevuah is going to come back to the Jewish people before Mashiach comes. Tachzor ha-Nevuah li-Yisrael ve'en sofik shuhu hakdomas Mashiach. I quote the Rambam's words. He wrote it in Arabic, but the translation. The Nevuah, he says, is going to come back to the Jewish people before Mashiach comes. He even gives a date. Basing it on the prophecy of Bilam, based on the prophecy of Bilam, he says, Ka'es Yomer Liyakov Yisrael Ma Paul Kel. The Rambam says there's a secret here. He gives the date. The date is Arbas Halafim Chameis Shivim V'Sheish Li Four thousand nine hundred and seventy-six, forty-nine seventy-six since the creation of the world, which is a few years, I think, after the passing of the Rambam. Not only that, the Rambam. He's not talking about the future. In the same Igeris Taman, the Rambam tells a story about a Jew who lived close to his own era, who prophesied, 
and all of his prophecies and predictions came true. And the Rambam speaks about the miracles and he, that he made, and then he writes, and I quote, The miracle he did finally authenticated for everybody that this man is truly a prophet. Not only did the Rambam have a tradition from his Zayd, from his father and his Zayd, that the Nevoah will come back to the Jewish people, but he says that around the time that he lived, there was a Navi Be'en Suffolk. That's what the Ram writes in the Geras Tema. I had he explained the Gemara when Chagas Shechaya Malachi died, Nestalka Shechina Yisrael. The Gemara is saying Nestalka Shechina Yisrael means it was not common. It departed. Nestalka departed because you have to have the right people, the right circumstances, the right conditions to be able to have it. In other words, Nevuah doesn't come stam, doesn't come in a vacuum. The Rambam says you need all of these characteristics and conditions. So when you have the right people and the right generations, they become conduits for prophecy. But the Rambam is not saying, the Rambam doesn't hold that the Gemara means that there was a decree that God said there's no more Nevua happening. And that's why if you look in the Gemara, it says, Nistalka Ruch HaKadosh Yisrael. Other things that left, the Gemara uses the word Batla or Paska. Here it doesn't say Batla or Paska. You know the difference? It was not Batla, it did not cease, it was not interrupted. Nistalik. It went upward, it departed, because you need the right people to be conduits. But if you have the right person, who's Roy for Nevoa, the Rambam, it seems, holds. And he paskins this way, that he can become or she can become a Navi at any period in Jewish history. That's why the Rambam, who discusses here so many prerequisites and conditions, does not say that there is no Nevoa bizban hazeh after Nevi Macharoinim. And, as I said, the Rambam himself in Igeris Teiman says there is Nevuah. If you also look in Sefer HaChinuch, Sefer HaChinuch, Mitzvah Tovkov Tezayin, he says the mitzvah of listening to a Navi is Noyeg, Kol Hazman Sheyimtse Navi Beneinu. Whenever there is a Navi among us, not, he doesn't give the quality of, of the Beis HaMikdash, that you have to have a Beis HaMikdash. This is a fascinating Ha'ara that you just made in the Rambam. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful aura. Why does the Rambam say Malachi was the last Navi? He's talking about the era of Navua. Again, there was an era of prophecy when there were, the Gemara says in Megillah, there were enormous amounts of prophets. Only 48 were transcribed. The era of prophecy ended with Malachi. Prophecy was not common anymore. But the phenomenon itself, we see here from the Rambam, is something that applies to all times. And the Rambam says that before Mashiach comes, Navua will come back to the Jewish people. So this is a fascinating idea that in Halacha, at any point in Jewish history, there could be a Jew, a human being, who is a prophet of Hashem. That's what the Rambam says. Next question. Next question. Beautiful, beautiful questions. Somebody asks a fascinating question. Why doesn't the Rambam mention a fifth quality by Moshe Rabbeinu that Shechina medaberes mitoich geroinoi? That the Shechina spoke directly through his mouth. Discussed by the Briskerov in Chidushe Moron Hagriz of Parshas Shemois. Yeah, I know that Griz. Why doesn't he say this? So this person wants to explain, based on a Vilna Gon and Tehillim, Tzadik Tess, that Shechina medaberes could also be by other people and not necessarily by Moshe Rabbeinu. Unlike what seems like from the Briskerov in Parshas Shemois. And also, and again, I don't know this for sure, but maybe that's included in the idea that Moshe didn't see things through a metaphor and an allegory, and therefore his oneness with Hashem was so deep that his very words were a conduit for the Shechina. Moshe says, V'nasati mitar artzachem, right? I will give you rain. He's not giving you rain. Hashem is giving you rain. But Moshe becomes completely one with Hashem. So perhaps, I'm just wondering, maybe it is included. The, the brisker gone, the, the brisker of, Reb Velvela brisker, gone to Bitzchak Zev HaLevi Salavech, Zech Tzadik Levroch, in Chidush HaGriz of Parsha Shemais, asks the question that when, he explains that when Moshe told Hashem, Mi Anoichi, who am I to take the Jews out of Egypt? He wasn't just saying, who am I? Hashem knows who you are. He didn't get the wrong address. He knows who you are. Rather, Hashem told Yaakov Avinu that I'm going to bring you down and I'm going to take you up. 
Anoichi Eiridim Chav, Anoichi Elchem, Vayigar. So much as me, Anoichi, I'm not you, I'm Moshe Nabenu, I'm just, you know, a shepherd. So Hashem tells him, Ki Eye Imach, I'm going to be with you. In other words, your Anoichi is going to become part of my Anoichi. Moshe is going to become so unified with Hashem that the Shechina speaks through Moshe. So therefore the goal is happening through Hashem because Moshe is one with Hashem. I once thought maybe that's a reason that Moshe's name is not mentioned in the Haggadah. Pela de Kazakh. Man emancipates a whole patient who should say a lechayim to Moshe, a toast to Moshe Rabbeinu. He's mentioned one, once indirectly, Vayara, Vayaminu Bashem of Moshe Avde, when we're talking about the different miracles. So we say a posik where his name happens to be mentioned, but there's not one tribute mentioned. It happened through Moshe. Maybe this explains it because he was, that was Moshe. Moshe is the person that his name you don't have to mention. Because if you mention his name, it's not Moshe Rabbeinu. Interesting, interesting. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artists. By the way, you could look at the comments here on the yeshiva.net. Very interesting comments. Some people quote some very, very interesting stuff. I'm very grateful to you. An interesting question the person raises. We say that we believe witnesses. Is it pshat that it's clear that two people won't lie? Or maybe it means, no, they might lie, but the Torah says us to, says to believe them. So we see here from the Rambam that it's the other way around. It's not that we know for sure they're not going to lie. We never know anything for sure. We assume that they're not lying, and the Torah tells us to rely on that assumption. That assumption should become the absolute criteria through which we render judgment. And the truth is, if we have no criteria, we could never know anything. We can, uh, one guy comes to the other guy and says, you know, you stole $100,000 from me, and he brings three witnesses, they can also be lying. So we, we remain stuck in a universe where we can't do anything right or wrong. There's no verdict about anything. So the Torah gives us a criteria, and the criteria the Torah gives us is to make assumptions based on the capacity of the human mind, and then the Torah says, rely on this, and I'm telling you it's fine. You should do it. So we're doing it not because we think that they're absolutely honest, but because the Rebbeinah Shalalem said that we should do this. It's, 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 it's a fascinating, fascinating concept. Next question. The Rekhachavah has an expression in Tzofnas Paneich that we listen to Edis not because it's a Metzius, but because it's a Din. <laughs> not because it's a Metzius. He has an expression like that. Not because it's the reality. I don't know the reality. <laughs> it's a Din. It's a Halacha. The Torah says you should put on Tefillin every day. The Torah says you should keep Shabbos. The Torah says you should fast on Yom Kippur. The Torah says you should listen to two Edis. It's a Din. Of course, you need cheskes kashrus. Of course, you need cheskes kashrus. Beautiful. In the, in the comment, somebody brings a Rabbi Kiva Eger, who writes in his Truvis Kufla Medvav, something that would seem to completely contradict this Rambam, but he gives a very beautiful answer for it. You can look it up in the comments. Very beautiful. Next question. The Rambam says that if you know somebody who is worthy of Nevoah, and then he does the miracle... You believe him. You could still think that he may be lying and he's just doing magic or sorcery. But the Rambam says, you still have to believe him. Why do you still have to believe him? Again, because the Torah says that we rely on cheskes kashras. That, that guf is a halacha of Torah, a love to Shmon. It'll become more clear in the subsequent chapters. Being happy, joyful, and in a positive state of mind is so important for all of us. It becomes even more meaningful when realizing that the prophets needed to experience and feel this. Why was this so important for them? I think this is a tremendous idea. I cannot get in touch with the divine energy in myself or in the world if I'm in a place of sadness, depression, melancholy, dejection, laziness, and apathy because I am not operating from my authentic self, from my real neshama, from my real pnimius. I'm operating from an external place, and we sometimes operate from there. Question. Yermia wrote Eicha, and he must have been sad. Wow. Yermia's prophecy was during the destruction of the, second, of the first Beis Amikdash, and you see how many tears he shed, and how sad and broken he was, so how can he be a Novi? It's a beautiful, beautiful question you're asking. The answer to this is, atzvus doesn't mean you don't have pain. Atzvus means 
you wallow in the quagmire of depression, of melancholy, of dejection. Yirmiya had pain. Yirmiya wept. Yirmiya sobbed. Yirmiya had deep pain. But he was not in a place of absolute depression when he was a Navi. Depression means I shut down. A certain part of me is dead. Pain is I don't shut down. I'm, on the contrary, I'm experiencing intently, intensely the reality of what's happening and it's touching me. But I could still connect to God from that place, from a place of pain, because I didn't run away. I did not run away from myself. I didn't run away from the world. I'm experiencing the pain and I can see and I could really know that God is present right here, right now. And that gives me a sense of simcha despite the pain. Not joy that everything is perfect and wonderful and good, but the joy that comes from being in touch with the meaning of every moment. Being in touch with meaning, with purpose. Connecting to Hashem's reality right here in this painful moment. So I think that's why Yirmiya could prophesy even under these circumstances. In other words, simcha doesn't mean everything is jolly and perfect and wonderful. Simcha means I know that I'm in the right place, in the right time, and most importantly, I have the choice to do the right thing right now. Including to express that pain. Including to write uh, Megillus Eicha, to write my lamentations about that pain, which, were, which is read during this time of the year. In other words... Yirmiya Hanavi was very, very much in touch with this. The Gemara Mishnah says, We thank God for everything in our life. The good things, the bad things. It doesn't say everything is good. There's bad things and there's good things. But I have to be able to find God in everything. I have to be able to be aware that Hashem is here right now, even if I don't understand it, even if my brain can't be wrapped around it. That's really the concept of Amuna that I could really become aware that Hashem is here right now, and a Navi is the most aware of that. He's acutely aware of that, to the point he becomes a conduit for it. And that's also considered, I think, a certain state of simcha. A certain state of simcha because there's a peacefulness. There's a peace of mind. I'm doing the right thing. I'm in the right place. I'm not repressing anything. I'm not running away from reality. This is where reality is right now. And yes, it's very painful. But there's still a sense of connectedness and a sense of purpose and a, and a sense of oneness. Even if I'm confused, even if I'm startled, even if I'm overwhelmed, even if I don't understand everything. That, I think, may be an explanation to your wonderful, wonderful question. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.